Alright, <clears throat> hey everybody, we're talking about the Protestant Reformation. We're starting Unit 2. I'm at Roman numeral 1 uh, in your lecture outline. Okay, so Roman numeral 1, um, let's go right into letter A. The Protestant Reformation uh, began in the 1500s. It's an effort to reform the Catholic Church. Okay, that's letter A. Um, the Catholic Church was the only church... Uh, that existed at the time is the only Christian church um, and what happened is by 1500 or so there were a lot of people who disagreed with the way the, the Catholic Church was was being run and they wanted to change that okay now the Catholic Church was the only church in Europe at the time it began uh, during the Roman Empire let's say before the year 500 and the Roman Empire kind of collapsed around the year 500 and the Catholic Church was the only existing church um, for the next thousand years until about the year 1500 or soon after okay the first guy to talk about when we talk about the Protestant Reformation is a guy named Desidrius, Desidrius Erasmus now Erasmus was not considered really one of the reformers he's not one of the guys who are going to really try to bring uh, these big changes that we're going to talk about in the church, but it was his philosophy, the way he looked at, at Christianity, that encouraged people to look differently at it. Okay, um, letter uh, C, uh, Christian humanism. Christian humanism is the philosophy of Erasmus. It's a big part of it anyway. Um, humanism is a term that that means that the that answers to the questions that people have, the issues that people deal with in society can be discovered by understanding humanity. They can dis be discovered by understanding who people are and, and um, you know, where they come from in their beliefs. Now, a big part of humanism is to, is to study the ancient writings um, of a particular philosophy. Usually it meant the ancient writings of the Greeks and the Romans. Okay? And in particular, Erasmus focused on the uh, Roman Christians and their um, way of, of understanding Christianity. So what Erasmus did was he read the, the writings of these ancient Christians. He is the guy who said that, that the answers to understanding Christianity can be found in, in understanding those writings. Now, that, that means the Bible, that means the, the New Testament in particular, but also the Old Testament, and it means the writings of the early church leaders. Now, it may seem very, very logical that Christians would study the Bible or study the ancient writings of Christians. However, most Catholic Christians by the year 1500 did not do that. In fact, in many times, in different places, um, actually reading the Bible was illegal for Christians to do in Europe. And the reason why this was, was because that the church leaders believed that if, if the average everyday person were to read the Bible, himself or herself, that person would be at risk of misinterpreting the Bible and therefore be guilty of the crime of heresy, which is misrepresenting um, God or misrepresenting the faith. Okay? So people were not encouraged to read the Bible up until this time. If they wanted to understand who Jesus was or what Christianity was all about, they came to that understanding through the church, okay? Well, Erasmus wasn't going against the church so much, but he just said that you, sh you should go deeper. He said that if you really want to know what it means to be a Christian, then what you need to do is to read and understand the original writings of Christianity, okay? Now, letter D, Catholic opposition. The Catholic Church opposed the ideas of humanism. They didn't believe that people should go to the actual the actual writings of the Bible or, and the ancient writings of, of philosophers such as um, St. Augustine or, uh, or, or, or the others. I'm not going to get into all the ancient philosophers too much in this class. I do a little bit more in World Civ I. But uh, the Catholic Church opposed this. Okay? Now, Erasmus remained a devout Catholic. He doesn't get in any trouble really, but he did have these ideas. Okay? It's one thing to have ideas that go with go against what is normally considered okay um, it's another thing to actually carry these things out so he just had ideas okay letter E the bottom line for Erasmus was that he believed that Christianity was really all about philosophy and not about rituals it wasn't about 
being obedient to the church, understanding Christianity wasn't all about um, following the rules of the church or what they called the sacraments of the Catholic Church. That's not what, what was most important to Erasmus. What was most important to Erasmus was your Christian philosophy. What does Christianity mean to you personally? Okay, That's the way you, as the individual, look at your faith. Okay, Once again, that was not something that was generally done at the time. Okay, Most people saw Christianity only in the way that it was presented to them um, in the church. Okay, Alright, so that is Roman numeral 1, Kevin's understanding of the Protestant Reformation. Kind of in summary now, I, what I said was uh, the Protestant Reformation is an effort to change the church. Okay, Obviously there were some problems with the church, and we're going to get into that with, with Roman numeral 2, but that's what the Protestant Reformation was all about. Okay, Let me check my time here. All right, look, I'm just going to stop right there um, and with this video. That'll be Roman numeral one, um, and I'll pick up with Roman numeral two on the next video.